it gets us across the finish line, but or across the starting line. I was but say we're done already. <laughs> yeah, we can be it. done. All right, we'll we can see be you next week. That All right, was, guys, we'll catch you on the. Was, that was podcast eleven. <laughs> that was podcast eleven. Short and sweet. I know how you guys like it. Hey guys, third party studios. We got talks too much. How's it going? And with me as always, co-host the Cody. What's up? And over in the other corner, we have Slim hey sporting guys. a red jumper. It looks good on me today. Oh, he's what? rooting for Putin today. He's ro- <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, as always. <laughs> so, how's your guys' week been going? Uh, busy. No, as always. Well, entertainment-wise, it's been fun. <laughs> There's so much that's gone on this week. It's insane. We've had so much news around, like, Walt Disney Studios. And it's it's crazy to think. I mean, last week we wanted to get into it because there was really big news dropping about their market shares going down significantly. That's crazy amount of much money. I didn't know. I didn't realize it was that much. So let that me preface the, let me preface the story by saying <clears throat> so. I think this article was uh, the article we're referring to was uh, like came out in late of last year. So it was talking about how much money they lost in 2022. So in 2022, they lost their market shares. Their market value dropped forty four percent. Holy cows! Now that comes down from a pretty high ceiling they had at the yeah, very beginning of COVID, fair. and when they launched um, Disney Plus, they they enjoyed a nice rocket uh, ship uh, shot up. So it comes on the back of that. So that has to be taken into consideration. But the fact that they had all of that and lost it, I mean, because if you look at their market share like pre COVID versus where it is today. It's actually very similar. It's not too. It's not too was, far away. I was just about to ask that. Is it? Is it? Was it a rocket up and then hit their like their ceiling from the and go below it, or did yep. it kind of go? Because that's not horrible. But I mean, that's not what the shareholders are going to see. No, the sh- they're I mean, seeing the forty four percent drop. Well, and why? I mean, the forty four percent drop. I mean, you have the obvious that people are going to blame it on COVID, right? I mean, bit. they're going to blame it on COVID. It's they're, just an easy out. Well, they're going to blame it on the fact Disney Plus, and I think even Disney is acknowledging Disney Plus. They leaned into it too hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I mean, what do well, you? Well, it's like uh, um, after Spider-Man: No Way Home, you can't blame uh, theater attendance and whatnot on COVID anymore. No, not anymore. And so you're because it made like one point fucking two or three billion. It was a lot of money. I but, saw that movie is really good, but yeah. And so, and also in uh, Disney Plus, you should have had a lot of subscribers during COVID because no one was fucking going get, anywhere. Get the five year or couldn't go anywhere. Talks. Right. So I mean, but it's just the content that they have yeah, on there see, is just so it shit. Just go back to. So Dis- so Disney Studios. Oh shit. Yeah. In I yeah, mean skyrocket there. Yeah, you Crazy. had um another thing to consider with Disney Plus is Disney gave it away for free. So much they did. Like the promotions that they had for Disney Plus, ESPN, Hulu. Yeah, and they hooked up with Verizon as well, didn't they? Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure that's how I got it for about a year for so free. I'm, I'm sure this isn't even all of them. But if you had, if you bought Hulu, you were given your first year Disney Plus for free. If you had Verizon, you were given your di- your first year Disney Plus for free. If you bought Disney Plus, you were given a bundle with ESPN and Hulu. If you, what was the, if you, um, there's a bunch of like free, three months free of this, like mm-hmm. so many trials that they had. And they weren't small trials. They weren't trying to get you on for a month yeah, and get your credit right. card. They wanted to get you on for a year to see all the content they were pushing out and everything that they had going for them. The problem that they had was, at the beginning of it, every movie on Disney Plus had already been seen by every single person in the world a hundred times. Yeah. So I, a, I also have a question with that. Is is because for some reason my brain's going here is. How quickly, because me and the fiance quite a few times are like, oh, we should go see that movie in theaters. And we postpone it and then like forget about it a little bit. And all of a sudden we'd see it on Disney Plus already. Like, oh, we don't got to go to the theater. We could see it for free. Well, Cody actually knows quite a bit about that. I mean, if you wanted to talk about like movies going straight to streaming, I mean, talk about the Scarlett Johansson story. That cost them a lot of money, I'm assuming. Yeah, no, uh... During COVID, they were putting movies out, and then it's like, well, we can't put it in theaters, so it's like, it goes straight to streaming, and then Scar Jo, my girl, what's up? Uh, <laughs> she's actually suing, not That's Disney itself, a single right. person. Who the fuck was it? I can't remember. I didn't uh, hear I, about that story. Right. Because she's getting screwed over. She really is. Financially. Uh, Jamie, can you pull that up? Straight to- <laughs> 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 but keep talking. 
Well, I don't know. I mean, it's not... Uh, well, for one, they're, everyone's kind of realizing that streaming is not like a, a sustainable source of income. It's not, especially for how much money they've made in actual like releases and movies compared to the past. It just doesn't make... Make as much it's money. like there's 10 new shows on Netflix every week, but <laughs> well, it's like, who the fuck's watching any of them? Well, so, I mean, one thing I mentioned is, besides marketing costs, you know, for if Disney's going to make a new movie, they're going to make money putting it into theaters. That I mean, let's say they were pl- they, let's say they made a movie they were planning on exclusively releasing it to stream. <clears throat> all the money's been spent. The movie exists. Now all you're talking about is putting it in theaters at a ridiculously high margin for for profitability. Putting it in theaters and having some some more money made, then putting it on your streaming service, because I think Mulan is one of maybe a handful of movies that when it went to Disney Plus, you had to purchase the movie, and then Disney stopped that. Oh, right that away. was a thing. I yeah. remember that. You did fine. have to purchase the movie, that. even though you had access. Or to no, the you could rent you it to... for thirty bucks. Yeah, you it was an it. insane price. That's nuts. And that was I think Mulan was, if I'm remembering correctly, I think Mulan was their first attempt at that. I think they did it a couple of times. And the, f- the backlash was tremendous. Oh, I'm sure. Because for 30 bucks. Well, and this was three years ago. You guys all both remember what I'm talking You guys both remember what I'm talking about. Oh, I, Maybe I not the details, now. but you guys both know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So Disney, when yeah, when I think when Black Widow came out, it might have even been the same story. Because I think a lot of movies that were coming out on Disney Plus had to be purchased or money had to be spent in addition to the streaming service that you were already... Uh, subscribed to. Subscribed to. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But if you have all, if you have these movies that are already made, and your intention is to launch them on streaming services, you are just missing out on money and not putting it in theaters. You're just leaving money on the table. And because that's, e- that's kind of what I was getting at, like saying why why are they releasing this to Disney Plus so quickly? Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Plus, your Good audience is smaller. I mean, how, how many people go to the theaters versus have Disney Plus? Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that more people go to the theater. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Because, I mean, I know people who will share streaming services and share streaming platforms, mm-hmm. things like that. Oh, speaking of which, I guess, uh, have either of you guys heard any news about Netflix, whether or not they followed through with their password sharing lockdown? I don't think they lockdown? did, because I'm still using I forgot parents. Netflix even exists, because I don't use it or anything. I'm still using it. It's my parents, so I don't think they pulled the trigger. Well, and I mean... So what was the rule? The rule was the rule for Netflix was that if you weren't attached to the home, to the home IP the home IP, and it registered your account as away from the home IP for yeah. thirty days or more, that your you would be forced to have you'd be forced to have to go through the reset process with yeah. I think it was something like two FA or you had to actually return the device home so it would work for like Roku's oh cell phones. But if you use a smart TV, you're just not well, unless you, you get a Roku to, or a detachable device. You're yeah, just not your console. using. But we yeah. use we use I have two consoles, one upstairs and one downstairs, and we use Netflix is used on them. They haven't done anything. It was just a threat, probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's so I share my account with so many people. Um, you know, I, I your I, account. Yeah, I own accounts. I have money. <laughs> I spend I spend money. Wait, on what things. do you actually pay for? Subscription wise, uh, Crunchyroll. I when I buy movies, I use Movies Anywhere so that I can put them up on for anyone I, I right. know to, to access. So subscription I, wise, though, you pay for Crunchyroll. Yeah, and that's it. Let's see. Hold on. I pay for. You VR, have my HBO, don't uh, you? Verve. Yeah, VRV. I don't use VRV for much <laughs> of anything, but uh, when I pay I, for anime, and that's it. That's it. But that is all. <laughs> Well, to be fair, that's a lot of what I'm watching these days. I mean, I'm... Well, yeah, because um, Western Western media is putting out just shit after shit, so... I will say that... Well, the Japs are kicking ass. I will... S- storytelling. Yeah, I will say for a fact, though, I think currently the best streaming platform is Paramount+. Plus. And here's... Let, let me the pitch UI it on... The sucks. Oh, no, I was thinking about Let me pitch, pitch it on two fronts. Paramount+. Plus has Sylvester Stallone is like almost the face of their content and they actually had a Super Bowl that's that? the first thing being advertised anytime it comes really? up yeah. yeah Paramount Plus even like even a, I think Paramount Plus had a Super Bowl commercial where they were on Paramount yeah and, he had and like Sylvester a, Stallone was ca- face was carved face, into the yeah, side of Paramount yeah, I remember that yeah and so in addition to you know having good actors on it the 
the quality of the content on Paramount Plus is not watered down by any additional wasted content with just messaging, right? Mm-hmm. Like, no just political messaging. We don't have black stories. We have stories. We don't have gay stories. We have stories. We have stories that are supposed to be for everyone. That is the mm-hmm. point. We're telling this so that everyone can have a positive experience, and we're not doing so by pigeonholing people in. Like, when I look at a movie like... Could uh, you imagine being advertised... Uh, movie or show based on it's like this is a straight story it's like oh I might as well see it then. I'm in yeah. <laughs> I'm hooked so, no. so, it's like, I don't give a shit who's in it that guy you haven't heard of well I can't care about that is that yeah. the only part of his personality is he loves the ladies <laughs> wow he's like me I can yeah. see myself in this picture fun guy yeah. is he still in a fraternity <laughs> <laughs> this is Van Wilder <laughs> Van Wilder was marketed just like that. Yeah. Now, but Disney is um, Disney's on the decline. Um, uh, one piece of news to, the, or an update to that article that I saw was that Disney had recovered something like seven percent. So, if their market value, if their market share value was a hundred dollars a share, and they were at a hundred and uh, twenty, a hundred and thirty, something like that, and they went down. They've recovered 8% back from the whatever number they were at at the beginning of 2023. So going through March, they've recovered some of that back. I think that has to do with Bob Iger. I, um, I think that has to do with the fact that, to, I mean, very recently. Who's the other Bob again? Chapek. Chapek, the one that got fired, or Iger, the one that got fired? Iger left. Chapek hired. Chapek did bad. Iger fired Chapek. Uh, came back. Iger's back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's confusing. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I didn't follow any of that, so. So Bob. So there's two Bobs. Both of them. Well, were Chapek see- got fired at an Elton John concert on Sunday night. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. I did hear that actually. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. So we need to add some context here. So, Bob Iger was CEO for a long time for Disney, and he was part of the acquisition for like Marvel Studios, part of the acquisition for Disney. He like Fox. Uh, uh, 20th century, century studio. Yep. He, he bought up a bunch of IPs. He bought up everything that was for sale and even bought up some things that weren't for sale. Um, <laughs> so he was just going after the world. He was trying to buy everything. Well, he, I think he, uh, I am the mouse. I think he stepped down as CEO and the position fell to Bob Chapek. Now, Bob Chapek is the CEO that kind of carried Disney through Disney plus, Star Wars, um, you could put all of, almost all of the faults of Star Wars at, and you can, you, there's more people to blame, but you can, you can lay those failures at Chapek's feet. Um, kind of, I mean, it's There's more, other people to blame. I'm yeah, just it's saying more he's of a charge. Lucasfilm issue with, uh, KK. Right, but, yeah, Kathleen Kennedy, but she, but, Chapek is responsible. As CEO, you are. I guess you are, you should, you're. Yeah. Responsible umbrella-wise. Yeah. Like, it's the, all. Like I, I like I said, it's not that there aren't other people to blame for Disney Star Wars being so bad, being so terrible. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna pause for a second, give Taylor a chance to correct me because he is. There are some Star Wars Disney Star Wars content you are fond of. Yeah, but it's mostly animated. You're wrong. Wrong. Oof. Wrong. Wrong. Oof. Fake news. You're wrong. <laughs> I, I like some of the animated stuff. The the Bad Batch. It's pretty good. I'm watching it right now. Uh, um, sleepy slim. <laughs> <laughs> What's um, the worst Star Wars to come out oh, it's from the, Disney? It's the new movies. Seven, eight, the, nine. It, it is awful. all those. They're they're not that good. Mandalorian's okay. Um, season one and two are good. Three, I'm watching two. It's it's okay. It seems like there is no story in three. No, in season it three. seems like there's absolutely going on nothing going fish. on. Well, the problem with the third season, and I won't dive too much into it, but it seems like he's doing a bunch of side quests, but they don't last long enough for someone to care. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, they're no like 20-minute episodes. No one cares, and it's like, oh, let's go do this quick. <laughs> well, it's instantly over in that episode. It's never like a three-episode mission he's going on. Right, there's no... It's a 20-minute little side quest, and it's completely over. Like, well, I didn't... You're not doing anything. You're just doing a bunch of tiny side quests, kind of. <laughs> yeah, so it's it, it, it's making less sense. It's an MMORPG and two, it, in IRL. You know, at least season <laughs> one and two had a that he was doing something the whole season he was trying to accomplish. Right. Well, I, I would argue that none of the seasons really have a, gr- I won't say great, but like a overarching story to begin with. 
Well, in season one, it's, it's like he was all trying, about he was trying to like Baby out Yaga. Who, who, <laughs> in season one, Mama he was Yaga. trying to figure out who Grogu was and why the Empire was hunting him. And he oh. wouldn't stop. One. He wouldn't no. stop committing genocide on these baby on these eggs. The, yeah. He kept eating all the little like the little eggs. And, egg. and then season <laughs> two, he was trying to get him to his home, and to Luke. Into Ahsoka, so there was. And then they arcing. they backtrack that and, and then they Boba Fett. It in Boba Fett, and now he's which doing is a like bunch of side quests. Mandalorian two point five. It was, <laughs> and it's like okay, at least one and two had an overarching mission he was trying to accomplish, and now three he is trying to regain his honor as a Mandalore. But it's, I mean, it's what honor serious. is there in being a Mandalore? They all seem like a bunch of dumb shits. <laughs> That's kind of what one of the characters says in, like, the season three. He's like, she's like, who cares? And he's like, I care. And this is a <laughs> so like, And you, the audience, should care. It still matters to me. <laughs> he's like, why do you care? You, the so audience, should honor. care because I said so. Because yes. I like this one. Dumb. And he did. It's, it's <laughs> Zuko 2.0. I think, my seven, <laughs> I think my seven-year-old nephew can write better stories. <laughs> oh, God. So, I'm enjoying that a little less, but the, still the animated series are pretty dang good, I think. Wrong. Well, I mean, I'm trying to remember what the original point was. I think we were, I think we were talking about uh, the reason that Disney Disney's rebounding money. in January, Disney's February, failure, March. Then we went to Lucasfilm, and then we we're talking about Star Wars. Right. Um. Well, I think another thing that Disney's doing that it seems like a lot of big companies are doing this, and I'm not convinced that it's because, um, I, I'm not be convinced it's because they're failing companies. I think it's, I think it's more of a. Uh, I think it's something that businesses just must do. I don't think they're making much of a... I think this is kind of... Your hand has been forced on the spreadsheet and on the on the billing side of things. What, forced to make watchable shit? No, they're not even going to continue... They're not even going to do that. They yeah, fire, I know I'm, they're not going to do that. About, so, Disney, um, on Monday, it was announced that Disney is laying off 7,000 pe- employees. Holy cows. Yeah. I mean, that's not... I mean, I think Disney employs, what, like, 100,000, 200,000 people across oh. the world. Are these a lot like these uh, Twitter sluts that were just... Uh, it's like, this is my day at work. I go to get coffee. I go get a frappy. And, and then, then I, I do go to my two safe hours space. of yoga. <laughs> then I talk to my therapist. And then I, I have a five-minute meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know that that's what... I mean... So Microsoft did this a long time ago. Uh, when this was before like culture became politics, it was um, Microsoft just was in a position where they had to let people go, politics and so they were just they culture. were just dropping the bottom ten percent of all of their all of their stations. So the bottom ten percent of work like results and stuff like that, ev- like all stations across the board, Microsoft is just cutting. So I think that Disney like taking the axe to these seven thousand jobs. It's. It really is going to be a, a, the reason. I think it really is, is because there, it was jobflation. They there created was, all these positions that they're didn't also. Need to exist. Uh, they're cutting like three point like one or two or whatever billion from uh, streaming. They're cutting that, and then another two from their movies. So they're like. They're cutting try, back. Yeah, they're trying to recuperate. It's like a total of five point something bill that there's like we'll do this every year or some shit. Well, and I'm not going to segue over to Warner Brothers in any meaningful way, but Warner well, they Brothers, don't have money. They don't have money. So I mean, like <laughs> all of these studios, if they want to keep making these hundred million dollar, two hundred, three hundred million dollar productions, they're going to have to start showing. Oh, did you hear what Indiana Jones cost? I don't. No, uh, tell me. I want three hundred fifty million dollar movie budget. Here's the thing. I didn't. That's need, insane. Does three hundred of it go to fucking Harrelson Ford alone? Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, well, Harrison Ford used to be an actor who. So um, he used to be. He's still alive. No, hold on. <laughs> he who's the um, George Lucas? George Lucas did an interview where he said that he couldn't get um, Harrison Ford to sign on to Star Wars sequels because Harrison Ford was critical and wanted to make sure that the that the screenplays the uh, the scripts were all good before he would sign on. So as they moved into The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Uh, George Lucas was talking about how he was always like everyone else was on board, but he was very nervous that he might not be able to get Harrison uh, Ford to commit because he wouldn't sign a long term contract for Mm -hmm. multiple movies. And so Harrison Ford had a has a reputation of being critical of scripts. And I'm just wondering, where's that Harrison Ford? I haven't seen him in like the last four or five movies. He's an 85 year old pothead now. So, (laughs) okay, to be fair. 
But like, I, yeah, I'll do I, a movie with a CGI dog. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying that the uh, Indiana Jones itself, I mean, yeah, he'll take. I'm sure he'll take the money. Well, four sucked ass. Yeah. I mean, even if we can count, we don't count that as as an Indiana Jones movie. There's only the three. Until <laughs> movie production studios move out of Hollywood, because most of the stuff that's done in Hollywood, CGI in a big warehouse, you could do that anywhere with fiber cable, with fiber internet. Yeah. So you can move all of the production of whatever studio you want into a state that didn't have all of these ridiculously overly restrictive unions where mm-hmm. the director's not even allowed to touch a boom mic because the union for boom mic workers <laughs> says so. The boom mic union. The boom mic union. You don't mess with the union. union. It's like a family guy, just a little snippet. It's a bunch of dudes standing around with boom mics. It's like, all right, what are we talking about today? But all of these jobs in Hollywood for all of these stage jobs in Hollywood are so ingrained and so protected that there's no opportunity to cut costs. And every single position is demand. Every single union and every single position is demanding a raise just like everyone else does every year. And the price keeps going up. The quality of work keeps going down, and you can't come up with any creative solutions while you're doing the business in that state. What happened to a meritocracy? What is that? Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. It's I'm a kidding. very, it's a very uh, ancient it's, idea. It's a, yeah, it's ancient. It's it's kind of quirky and cool. <laughs> to where you're paid based off of your own merits. That sounds like communism. Do a that job. Like communism. I don't like that. That sounds really out there. You're say, a radical. Say you're doing better than the other you're person doing the same for those job. Yeah. Radical ideas. You might get paid more. I mean, it's radical. It's an it's idea, out though. there. I'm gonna call you a radical. You're a radical. Yeah, you're right. I think the shitty person and the good person should get paid the same. I agree. <laughs> and how dare you yeah. even suggest an alternative to that? I'm so, I'm just too. thinking outside the box, guys. But this is, I mean, they're going to just lay off all of these positions, and their hand is forced here, I think. I really do. The fact that they're cutting back on studio budgets and stuff like that for movies, for streaming, it. I think that reinforces my position on this. It's that... God. Disney is on the downhill. They ha- they enjoyed a very nice little peak of having all this extra cash in their pocket. It and ended in 2000, or 2019. And they didn't do jack with it. Yeah. They did nothing with all that goodwill. They burned the, they, they burned everything to the ground with when you have this abundance of success and you can't think of what to do with it, you take the janitor's idea. You take the intern's idea. And you just start making crap. You take that dude doing heroin shitting in the middle of the street. His idea first. You go to the yoga department of your studio yeah. and you go ask all of these women who just yeah. enjoyed their frappa latte to give you 10 minutes of honest work <laughs> and pitch their own ideas. And then they go to HR and complain about it. No. Hey, hey, you <laughs> e-girl sluts. What do you think about Star Wars? <laughs> give me some ideas. What if they were all gay? I love it. Print. Do we have you a yoga pants it. policy in can't here? Put it in the can. We're done. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to theaters. Send it to theaters. Why don't they like it? It costs us $600 billion to make. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you mean <laughs> you hold up a dollar bill on a television screen for 10 minutes straight and people are going to subscribe to that. It's like the Joker that came out was produced less for less than $50 million and made over a billion. And now you got movies costing $350 million that won't even make $350 million. No. Yep. Yeah, and that's and yep. to your point that you bring up often, that's pre-marketing budget. That's just making the film. Yeah. So you can't just lose $100 million at a time. I mean, the, the U.S. can, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just I mean, print more. You don't have we'll, money we'll, machines. <laughs> we'll give it to those Ukrainian bitches. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so Five Disney God, lays God, off 7,000 employees. Just for fun. What kind of positions do you think they cut? Just for fun. Like, what kind of department do you think? If Ooh. you had to pick, what what department was slashed that had 7,000 people in it? Well, it wasn't uh, the diversity and inclusive inclusivity. Wow, that's a dumb word. Yeah, um, it's, it's harder to say than pronouns. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> it wasn't that department. Okay, not that department. They need sure. that one. Yep. I'm going to go with, uh, I don't know, the writing staff is also... Maybe they're just—they're not existent anymore. The they cut stuff. off their CGI guys because they own Ooh. all of them right now. Well, and all the CGI. No one else in Hollywood can do CGI because Disney is 
But we can also <laughs> we can also see that the quality of CGI is getting worse it's too. W- it's oh getting yeah, way worse. Yeah, it's fucking horrible. It's crazy. I well, can watch well, movies from the from the nineties, early two thousands, twenty tens with CGI in them, and just not notice the chick, at all. The mm-hmm. chick that was in charge of C- CGI just got fired from Disney. So well, there you go. Yeah. Are we gonna talk about Are we gonna talk about that? Might as well. It's a right. clean segue what? until you broke it up asking me that. <laughs> Fine, nailed it. <laughs> why don't you uh, Why don't you run with this one? You know more about this than I do. Um, Victoria Alonso, Alonso, activist first, producer second. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> she got fired from Disney. She was basically in charge of all their CGI and whatnot. Um, there's many theories and uh, not a whole lot of. Uh, uh, confirmation yeah about why she got fired one was like she was doing a movie where she's doing cgi on or some shit and under disney contract you're not supposed to work with competitors or anything and so i think she's fired for that another one apparently she was just too woke in her opinion and got fired for that <clears throat> which is bullshit coming from D- disney yeah you're, you're not gonna get fired ever. for being woke from hollywood in hollywood that's absolutely absurd you'd be praised yeah You'd be made CEO. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's pretty much just a fall guy for... Uh, well, she was, I think, it just on uh, Disney Marvel stuff. Not all Disney stuff. Yeah. So I think it's kind of more like just a fall guy or fall gal or fall them for... He them. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Feige, the okay. uh, CEO of Marvel. Man, he is he has got some sort of golden shield on him. That guy can just yeah. continue what to create he, what failure. What he have over somebody? <laughs> yeah, he's got some dirt on someone. He's got Jeez. some dirt on somebody. Well, he usurped the throne of uh, Marvel Comics. Yeah? It was like him and someone else. And then the other guy was, I can't remember his name, was more uh, right-leaning, shall we say? So he got ousted right away. Yeah, I know. You I, can't have that. No. You can't have that. I remember what you're talking I know what you're talking about, too, because the, the, the same guy is like, Talk, he's talking, we need to make better quality content, and that shit can't fly yeah, at Disney. Like, what the fuck do you say to me? <laughs> <laughs> better. You want quality shit? How dare you. We're trying to find the bottom of this hole. <laughs> yeah, keep digging. <laughs> keep digging. Hands of a shovel. So, We're I, trying to make crack with baking soda here, not the real shit. <laughs> so Victoria, apparently, her position on this is she believes that she was fired because she's a gay Latina and she's in charge of... Whoa, you know, wait, said, she's Latina? Yeah. That's gendered. That, that goes against everything. Latinx, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There um, we go. We try to be <laughs> very inclusive here at Third Party Studios. Yeah. Bitches. We uh, <laughs> But uh, she... She's a gay pill. Sorry, gay la- you're good. You're good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The gay Latina... Um, so the reason she believes she was fired is because she they were trying to release um, a movie in Kuwait, and the studio asked her to edit, not remove just blur or edit um, some gay scene in the in the film. And she refused. She said no, she wouldn't do that. The movie then could not be uh, could not be dropped in, in Kuwait. So there's just so the movie just didn't go there. Because she they she refused to edit and apparently this is the same this is uh, something that Ryan Kimmel brought up. This was the unions at work because Apparently, the studio can't just go in and take on that work and just have someone else do it because her job, her CGI editing team, is protected by that union. So that work, that department is protect was protected. So God, there's so many politics and fucking unions. No shit. Huh. Yeah. But yeah, it's almost easier just to fire. <laughs> there is that. Yeah. There is also another thing where she called them. out. She called out uh, one of the robs, Chapek or Iger. Uh, probably Chapek because he was around. I mean, Iger's only been in back in Disney for a couple months. Okay, Iger's the one that's it. Okay, so she called out Chapek because of the uh, the parental rights bill in Florida, which they coined "Don't Say Gay" for some fucking reason. Yeah. Uh, it's she, almost like she basically they had a, called out. A mess, a motive. She called out Chapek saying, it's "Like, hey, we got to push back on this and blah blah," and then it basically turned into uh, DeSantis taking away tax exemptions for Disneyland or some shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that actually went. I mean, uh, but you can't call bill. out you can't call out your boss like that and then expect to keep your job. I don't care how close you are. Right, but DeSantis signed that bill only I think this last month in March. Um, that remove that stripped Disney uh, Florida's status. 
So they're trying to figure what out how it? that balance, how that works now because the status is gone. Yeah, the bill's officially signed. Um, I know that that happened in, and I believe it was March or February, but it, but it's already been signed. Um, there was a big uh, press conference over it. I, I remember watching. So, yeah, the don't say gay bill that really worked out great for you guys. You know, just uh, <laughs> keep doing that, keep, and keep we'll we'll be right there with you to enjoy the show. <laughs> but, um, then we have. I mean, it's all right. We got the transurrection this weekend, so. Yeah, that's been fun. I went downtown. Um, I was telling you guys this story. I went downtown, and I saw a gay pride uh, gathering downtown. They had mega horns. They had a ladder that people could climb up on and tell their story. Was it like five of them? No, there was like 20 to 30 people there and yeah. kind of in one area, and it I got me curious. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm not <laughs> open-minded enough. Maybe <laughs> I need to go, and I need to hear what these people have to say. I walked down, I walked over. I sat quietly on a bench across the street just listening to what they had to say and they're like everyone hates me <laughs> everyone's saying i don't have the right to exist and i'm like you're gone <laughs> first of all no one's saying that well i tried people hate you because well, you're yeah. bitching all the time right well, well, that's I, enough for the day. i mean i sat there for 10 minutes i listened to three different people speak and i was just like am i am i insane here that no one is telling them they don't have the right to exist and yet they their brains just interpret whatever they're hearing in that way. And then I heard this one guy walking down the street past me. And you guys both been downtown, so you guys know it's Broadway. It's a pretty small uh, pretty small street. Uh, oh, yeah. So this couple walks past me, and I hear the guy like say to his girlfriend, no one gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was like, and I was like, okay, that's I'm on the I right mean, side of it. That's I'm what okay. I've been thinking I'm the whole time. It's yeah, like, I was like, can I guess the demographic of people that were there? You can, Yeah, let's have some fun with it. I'm going to start with white. Ooh. Okay. Lean. Keep going. White. I'm going to go middle class. A uh, little overweight. Colored hair. Usually it's blue. <laughs> You're hitting all the beats. <laughs> uh, they're probably wearing a jacket. It's a little cold outside. So it's maybe, very, it was pretty dang. So, so it could be like shirt. unzipped with like a, a shirt that doesn't quite cover the belly. <laughs> painting a picture over there. <laughs> okay. How many flags do you think they had? And I bet there were mostly too, women. Too many. Too oh, many how many different kinds? Yeah. Oh, there's so many for those alphabet people? Y no yeah. joke, but give me a number. Just th have fun with it. Throw out, throw out a number for fun. I'm going to go five. Eight. Okay. There were, like I said, 15 to 30 people there, and there must have been 40 flags. Jeez. Some people were holding, like, three flags. They're not even un united in their own... U <laughs> the worst flag I saw there, the worst flag I saw was the one where it's, like, um, all of the different religious symbols painted in rainbow, but then they had, like, Islam and, like, whatever, the, like, Russian sickle and, and hammer. And I'm just like, dude, you guys don't know what's going on <laughs> at all right now, do you? You guys yeah. skipped like, history class, you didn't you? Know. I feel so hated in North Dakota. I'm like... Well, try the Middle East. <laughs> like, try anywhere else in the world. Try so. Russia, where that symbol comes from. Yeah, if try. You had that there's flag over there at all. You wouldn't the, be. You wouldn't be around anymore. We'll just say that. Uh, an I'm NHL gonna, team set out a like gay pride like warm up at one of their games or whatever because they had a couple of Russian players on their team. Yeah. Because it's now the like there's some gay laws or whatever in Russia, to where it's like you can't be gay. Or yeah, some you shit. can't have that here. We don't do that here. <laughs> we don't do that. Can I just say, Cody? Um, we don't do that here. You were six for six. <laughs> you, were, <laughs> you were all aces. You bowled a, a solid 330. I watch a lot I'm of YouTube. Saying, I'm just saying, you. yeah, that was um, exactly what it was, even down to the muffin top. Um, <laughs> oh, and they all had, like, thick black frame glasses or something like that. Seven for seven. Man. Okay, here we go. Like you're getting, you're just it's like you were there. You could throw a couple piercings in there somewhere. You're rolling twenties, dude. Were you there? Were you there? <laughs> Did you have a story? To Did tell? I just not notice you were in the crib? Yeah, I was in drag. <laughs> uh, did you bring kids around you? I don't. Yeah, I was reading them a story. Oh, good. Okay, good. Um, well, I think there's one more story we wanted to get to for uh, the Disney thing. Might as well continue with the Jonathan Majors, huh? Yeah, let's go. Let's lean into the Jonathan Majors thing. Um, this one will be quick. This one will be super quick, but then we'll move into the war room and see uh, 
and do the next part. Um, so Jonathan Majors. Uh, Jonathan Majors, for people who don't know, he is currently cast as Kang the Conqueror, which oh. is an iconic Marvel villain and is currently being set up as the big villain for the upcoming Avengers storyline that Marvel is trying to put out. The next uh, Thanos. The next Thanos. Exactly. I think that's a good way to describe it. Um, in other content, he is also um, he also is very big in uh, Creed Three. He was the antagonist in Creed Three, and he actually was in a Super Bowl commercial that the I think it was the U.S. Army put out um, <laughs> uh, a recruitment uh, recruitment uh, commercial. Um, I will throw out that that commercial has since been pulled. Yep. So that's gone. Because um, the allegations, nothing's. There, there's Ale- he's alleged that he had assaulted I, I don't know if it was his girlfriend it's his girlfriend okay so the allegation is that he's assaulted his girlfriend and he has been charged with I think strangulation and assault what yeah something like that and, de- and maybe domestic abuse domestic dispute yeah. yeah all that so he's uh, so he was charged with all of that now one thing I want to throw out there is that very recently on the podcast we were talking about Justin Roiland who has, who the king has now been found innocent. Which is weird, because I read all the texts. <laughs> I really believe that that was going to go through, I really believed he was going to get convicted, just because I have very little faith that, like, the justice system even oh, yeah, gives yeah, a yeah. damn about you're innocent You're accused of something, you're guilty. Yeah. I feel like it's very rare for the justice system to do anything, like, good anymore. So I'm, I'm a little black on that. So I really didn't think Justin Roiland would pull out a win on that one. Maybe he was just really funny. <laughs> the, the judge, judge likes like, Rick, Rick and Morty. Ah, oh, jeez, judge. I don't know. Oh, jeez. <laughs> just doing, the, oh, doing oh, geez. the voices the entire trial. Damn it, judge. You, you killed us all, judge. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I should stop. But it was very... Uh, um, these are just allegations. He has not been tried in a court. He has not been found guilty. He has been charged. So obviously there was enough evidence to bring charges against him. But, like I said... But judges, his legal team... Yeah. Which is batshit wild to me that they did this. They released texts from his girlfriend saying it's like, it's my fault for for the fight and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, so you're admitting in the text there was a domestic abuse uh, situation. And she's taking fault for it, but it doesn't really matter whose fault it is. It's a, still a domestic it's like you well, choked a bitch. Well, hold, you can't I mean, just. So there's invert. I mean, the domestic. D- but also domestic that comes abuse. with that comes let's with too. It's like about, you you have you. Let's talk about the insanely non-sensitive topic of domestic abuse. Yeah. Right yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. I know it's sluts that have been in. <laughs> I mean, there are relationships. There are women who are domestic abusers too. Like yes, that's possible. Yes, there but, are women who instigate a fights and instigate assault. And oftentimes it's verbal abuse versus physical abuse. A lot of times, and though, they in, bait uh, the attack. A lot of times, though, in these uh, abusive relationships, uh, like a woman that's not at fault or whatever for being in this abusive relationship, does have like the psyche of like taking blame. It's like, what did I do to start this? And sure. Blah, blah. So there is a bit of that in the text messages too. So it's it, like, oh, I'm sorry. I tried to grab your phone, and then you just started choking me. Yeah, right. I, I apologize for uh, defending myself against your violent attack. It was all my fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you were a jury on that trial, would you find Jonathan guilty? What color is he? Black. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I like how I corrected myself just in time. Uh, the evidence <laughs> we have now, uh, was it like, can I abstain or whatever? Did you? Yeah, you can. Um, so what is it when juries? I don't uh, watch hung, Law and Order. A hung jury is when uh, the jury just comes do do? back with no, uh, no decision. No, yeah. No so verdict, yeah. right and, now, um, and you must convict. I think with a hundred percent decision with jury trials. Yeah, I don't know. So, right now I'm up there. So I think who knows? Oh, for the best hope, it was just a big misunderstanding that got blown yeah. way out of proportion. Yeah, everyone goes back to their maybe daily her lives. neck jumped into his hand. <laughs> so it happened. <laughs> I ain't seen no bruises. All right. So we're going to move into the War Room. Uh, we had a lot to talk about with the Disney Studio stuff. Um, this week on the War Room, we are talking favorite standalone video game. Um, Slim, can you break down the rules real quick while I pull up the options here? I think you said it can't be like part of a ongoing series. Um, 
like a one two three game um like my dead space series kind of doing right one two and three it's a ongoing story through multiple games it kind of has to be its own story that starts and finishes within that game not yeah. saying you can't have like oh it's number two in carry, this game with a name on it but yeah. it's got to be a standalone story it can carry over like uh, characters and whatnot but it's just got to be a self-contained story okay right okay so who wants to kick it off go ahead <laughs> cody ah oh, you would pass it off to me <laughs> um dum dum yeah, so mine was uh, uh, Far Cry 3, which was described <sighs> back in the day as uh, Skyrim with guns, which is wrong. It's not even close to it. But to be fair, it's the game we deserve, not the one we needed right then. It actually has a story We needed that's guns good. in Skyrim. Yeah. We needed them. <laughs> it's the one we deserve, but not the one we need. But no, I picked this one. One, because uh, every game I like or love is in a franchise with an overall <laughs> sure. story. You so have a significant disadvantage on this one, It was a pain sure. in the fucking ass trying to pick a game. <laughs> and then, yeah, I stumbled upon this last night, and I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll talk about this one. Well, Far, Far Cry 3... Um, it just, set the standard for Far Cry today, for yeah, sure. which I don't think any of the future Far Cry games they lived up to. They have not lived up to it. Five no way. is good. Five was good, I agree, but it didn't live up to it. Mostly because it's based in America. 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 But um. But the real reason why three is so good is its story and its uh, Jason, the protagonist, is it's a bunch of rich kids that go fucking vacationing on an mm-hmm. island they shouldn't be at, and uh, everyone gets kidnapped and trying to be sold into slavery, and then Jason's got to go save them all. It's Jason's descent into madness and mm-hmm. just, like, uh, enjoying the mayhem that's going on around him. That's intriguing. And also, it has the best video game antagonist of all time, Voss. Voss is oh so good. Oh, my gosh. Michael Mando, we've talked about him before. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was he in that we were talking about? Was it... Uh... It's a show that you watch. Oh, no. Better Call Saul. We were talking about Better Call Saul, and he's in it as Nacho. Yeah. Michael Mando is, Not in my sure. opinion, one of the best actors. I think he's awesome. I don't. I think he does a great. Obviously, his voice acting was phenomenal, but I think yes. he is incredibly underutilized. Voice in and motion capture for this uh, game were awesome. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah, the part wasn't even uh, written. Yep, I, I did. The part read this wasn't article. written at all. The character of Voss, he, he was, walked in and gave a like his rendition of what he should have in the game and they loved it so much they threw it in they're like yes yeah this is awesome we gotta have this crazy um, ass latino in to, here to add on to like the main character's descent into madness because i've played the game twice you don't you don't really realize what's happening until you're really far deep into the like game like the final choice into the final <laughs> choice and you're like okay i'm going with him going this all of a sudden he's like i'm not leaving this island i'm here to kill everybody you're like how did we get here <laughs> Whoa. It's like you can kill all your friends and stay on the island. You're like, how did I get here? And you're like, oh, this guy has slowly been losing, and I didn't even realize. Yeah, it's the like dark... you don't even realize you're reading uh, Alice in Wonderland quotes yeah. during the loading scenes. Yeah, no, I mean the one thing about the gameplay I really liked was so this is a it's kind of an open world with restricted zones. Yep. So the map is the map is open where you can it's go level anywhere. Level gated, I would say. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yep. But um, the even though there are gated areas of the map. It never feels small. No. It no. never feels small. It feels, feels really good. There is fast travel, which is nice, but the exploration of the map is actually enjoyable too. And it's not really because there's any side quests. The side quests are very, very easy to just roll past. Yeah, it's like hunting missions. A and, lot of hunting uh, missions. But you tribal kinda, missions and taking out posts. They, they never feel like those side missions or the hunting missions, which I hate in some games, are like, you need to do this. They feel like... You really should because it's really going to help you, but you never are forced. I only did two mm-hmm. in like my entire play. I, I did I did like a couple of them just to get my ammo up, and all of a sudden before the very end, I'm like, I'm going to do all of them, and I stopped and I did everything, and then continued the game. Yes. Because uh, they this, do help you a lot, but it's never forced. Yeah, right. This game introduced a lot of tropes that suck in open world games today, but when it came out, it was fine, cool, it's a new thing, mm-hmm. but now it's in every game. Yeah. I like that you own your, like, Halo Infinite took actually a, a 
a page from Far Cry 3, and I don't know if it meant to, but the result was there. When you're in Halo Infinite, um, and you are you actually conquer zones, and then you activate a beacon, and then your troops drop in and you own Ooh, that zone. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's very similar map conquering. So it's like, yeah, taking out an outpost. Yeah, you take like, an outpost, and then you own that outpost. No more bad guys coming in this it, area. Exactly. So... I so Halo Infinite did that. It actually is one of the things I think Halo did so wrong was Halo Infinite should never have existed. I think it was a tremendous mistake. Well, there's so much fucking uh, development time on that, and then it seems like they did the bare minimum for mm-hmm. both multiplayer and the campaign. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it was so just one empty. of the one of these days we're gonna talk Halo. Maybe it'll be like when season two of the show comes out or something like that, and I'm forced to. You think that season two is going to come out? I think that there are people who... I think this is someone's hill to die on, for sure. I think 343 Studios doesn't know how to succeed at anything, and so I think think it's inevitable for them to continue. Hmm. Because they don't know how to do anything right. All they know how to do is fail, and so I feel like it's inevitable for them to make a decision that will lead to failure. Hey, man, keep doing what you're good at. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll talk about Halo at some point in the future. But I, yeah, I, no. Far Cry 3, back to the game. <clears throat> Far Cry 3 was the benchmark for open world games. And now everything plays like Far Cry 3, and it's gotten old. But back in the day when it came out, 2012, when the world was supposed to end, it was good. Well, and phenomenal voice acting, acting phenomenal cutscenes, um, great Memorable shoot- characters. Memorable characters, phenomenal shooting. Uh, uh, and it had... Combat mechanics. That was the start of, like, the drug sequences, too. Like, the hallucinations yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. And then you had the one of the best uh, levels of all time. It's just you're burning a field of weed with a flamethrower. Yeah. And it has that dubstep reggae thing going yeah. on. Uh, yeah. I listen to that like song to this day. That was so good. That was such a good scene. All right. Uh, Slim, why don't Beat you take that? On? Yeah. Why don't you take on? We oh, well, hold on. Well, let me. There's one question I want to make sure to ask each of us on this one. What did the game miss? What wasn't in the game you wish was? Uh, it's hard to say because this is 11 years ago now that my game came out. Do you, try, your, try your hardest. <sighs> that it missed. That it missed. What it missed or left out or an addition that you think oh, should no, be, would be cool. Uh, what it could have done better is uh, Voss wasn't the final uh, yes. antagonist or That's anything. Was he was only say. there for half the game. He's there for half the game and then he died. Or supposedly died right and then um he should have been the final over. i agree he should have been the final because who the fuck cares about was it Hoyt? i didn't even care the second time i played the second boss got killed off i stopped playing <laughs> it's like as soon as you kill boss it's, it's like, like game I'm over like, okay that's enough and bloop, shut the xbox off yeah that's yeah, good honestly it is a really that is a big moment in the game where you could probably step away from the game and be done yep. and best <laughs> monologue ever from an antagonist do you good. know True. the definition of insanity. Of insanity. Yeah, I, uh, I used that in my Dungeons and Dragons game. <laughs> I invented a character uh, after Voss, uh, and <laughs> it was actually invented Kohan loosely Kohan. used. But. It was really hard to. I mean, it's really hard to take that inspiration and fail. Right. It's just so solid. Um, all right, Slim, why don't you run with uh, Republic Commando? I actually have not played this, this game. This is quite a bit older game, 2005. Um, I got through level one. It's pretty. It's a really good Ooh. game in my opinion. All this, you're in charge. You're like the like the leader of this elite commando unit, and in the Star Wars universe, who's sent on these super elite tasks during some iconic battles. This is during the Clone Wars, right? Um, this is during the Clone Wars. Your first mission is in Geonosis on the in the second movie, um, when they go to Geonosis and invade it. Okay. You're doing like all these co- covert missions during it. You're trying to hunt down because there's three planets. You go through and there's like ten, like eight missions on each. So the first one, you're hunting down the leader of the Geonosians to try to get him so the Geonosians don't like rebel up again. Right. And so that's your main mission in that. And you're going through all this. And then the second one, you're on um, a star a star uh, carrier. Like it went dark and you go there and there's like Geonosian slavers. So you're trying to get through that and figure out what happened to them. But, they, but like the main mechanics is you're the leader and you try to make sure you're tactically in place of every before every fight so you like don't fail it's like a tactical yeah it's a tactical squad sh- shooter squad kind of. shooter and if you just like all we're all gonna run there and shoot that's not gonna work on the highest difficulty you gotta set you're just not even, good it's enough it's even like more creative than that like you have a sniper you have a demolitions expert and right. you have a guy who's well-rounded and everything 
So you got to set your sniper to the sniper position, your demolitions expert to like either crack doors open, else it'll take longer if you don't send him to go do that. So you got to like plan that out during fights in like sections two. So it's it's like trying to make decisions on the fly because you're like oh or these three can defend me while i do the important stuff right because back in 2005 ai still a little they did a really good job but it's 2005 ai did sometimes you times they're a little derpy so you're like i'm gonna do this <laughs> right. series of events else they're gonna mess it up and we're all gonna die i'll do it myself did you have um, a lot of agency as the main character of this story like did you have a lot of like decision making or i mean obviously you could command where the units went but um the story unfolds. It's is it a linear it's path storyline? Dang linear. Okay. Yeah. I'd compare it, it to. Is extremely. Linear. In terms of you would understand, probably like Halo Reach. Oh, okay. It's okay. like you got that squad of misfits. Each has their own role. Yep. Yes. I mean, those guys run on autopilot in Reach, but I know right. exactly what you mean. The, okay. It's definitely not like that at all in this game. It's very, um, very. You need to direct people unless you're on easy, obviously. Right, you have to macro the hell out of they, it. They were, and I think they kind of made like a, a phone, if I remember, I looked up a little bit, they made a, like a, on your cell phone a ex- new game of it, but they were going to make, they got they canned it, but they were going to make a new game coming out. It was going to be Commando, Republic Commando, um, Order 66, because how this game oh. ends, how this game ends so is you're sequel, on yeah. Kashyyyk. Oh, Yoda's wow. like, Yoda goes through your intercom, he's like, I need your help at this command post, and it's right right before order 66 happens is when the game ends that's pretty cool and so they're gonna come out they can and i'm so upset with it but they're they wait, 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 wait. Out of a, are the, order 66 is gonna come out and you're gonna be a republic commando chasing down jedi are those command are those the ones that got beheaded are those the commandos nope. it, no no no, no those okay are just clone troopers okay because i I was trying to, I was trying to understand when Yoda calls for them at the command center. Or right? would it be at the like end of the game they're going down from because they're in the rooftops, like right. way in the trees, getting they're saving um, the Wookiee general because he's being. Uh, would it be damaged. like Bad Batch or whatever? Because Bad Batch is like their chips or whatever went awry, so they don't follow Order yep. sixty six. So they that they was were, an option. Yeah, so they were in the next game supposedly gonna follow through with the order. Oh, that's and they cool. were gonna hunt Jedi. Yeah, let's be the bad that would, guys. That would have been sweet. To, like, hunt the Jedi down or be a part of whatever. From what I know, uh, pretty much everyone loves this game, and they want this to be a remake more than, like, any other Star yeah. Wars that's out there. I would really hope they'd remake it, and if it's sold really well, come out with a new game. I would, like... Right. I, I w- you see General Grievous in this game, even. Oh, yeah? You, you never, like, chase them, but they're, like... In the scene, you, like, go up, and you're, like... There in, he is. In Kashyyyk, and you're, like, oh, that's... There's General Grievous, let's see if we can stop him. And you go around and he flies away on his... I'll be like, fuck And you're like, that. Well, the target got away. And you're like, <laughs> would the people handle him? I'm going the other way, dude. Yeah. Cody, I'm like, let's not be him. You've, you've dug into... Cody, you've dug into Star Wars lore. Is, yeah. Is Grievous ever canonically on Kashyyyk? I don't think Grievous was ever canonically uh, on Kashyyyk. He had droid generals run that, run that attack. Through... Do, 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 do. Okay, um... Anything that came out, uh, like TV show or movie wise, no, that I know of. I mean, I watched. I, I think I watched all of Cl- Clone Wars. Well, and this, it's not like this doesn't have the blessing of Lucas Studios or yeah. anything like that. It's not like this is like the non-canonical storyline. But I'm trying to figure out where this lines up. Wait, and where no, because he dies in the beginning of three. Yeah, see, that's my issue. I'm and like, so maybe he's leaving that Kashyyyk. To go to Utapau or something. I'm just gonna. Oh, say he's like it. setting up, setting up the attack that happens later in the movie. You could explain your way out of it. Yeah, I don't but. know. I've just, like I said, I haven't played this game for a while. I was gonna replay it before I came over here, but I've been playing Resident Evil Four remakes. So yeah, everyone's fucking playing that game. That's taking all my time. <laughs> Is this a long game? Is this like a long it's game? Probably, it's a 2005 Star Wars game. It's probably roughly around 12 hours. I yeah, think something like that. Okay, I'm just uh, so same question to you uh, that I asked Cody is. What's missing from this? And obviously, there's a there's a desire for a remake. That's I, not what I'm asking. It's what yeah, yeah. What was the game missing in 2005 that in 2005 would have been really nice to have in? I really wish they Darth Vader. Really wish they <laughs> <would've> <laughs> It was like way say, before Darth Vader yeah. existed. <laughs> I wouldn't say reuse the same weapons because you use the same weapons through the whole game. Ah, the machine gun. Not much. The sniper very. is the grenade launcher, and then you pick up a weapon. Because your, your one gun can change between the sniper, grenade launcher, and assault. All he does is he'll rip the barrel off and put a new one on. 
That's pretty cool, though. Oh, yeah, that, cool. that was very really cool. innovative I back in the day. I wish you could upgrade them somehow. Either damage, oh. and it would change the look then, maybe. Yeah. What, like, have an upgrade system of some sort. It's like, <clears throat> well, you go to your, your commander, because you have a, an officer. Maybe well, at the, every mission, you can upgrade a gun. <clears throat> well, 2005, you got to think that... I think it was not long... I, I might have the years wrong, so Cody will probably correct me if I'm wrong. But modern Call of Duty Modern Warfare... Right, the first one that came out was that was, was two thousand seven, yeah, two thousand seven. So that's not a, that's not a mile away uh, in time in mm-hmm. game development timeline. It's not like that changed the world, but I'm just saying. But the fixed years is so easy because like uh, Weapon Kotor, Kotor came out in uh, mm-hmm. two thousand three. I want to mm-hmm. say, and it's like you have like leveling up and upgrades and whatnot. Yeah. And that it's yeah. like it was way before the industry realizes like, hey, we can kind of put these RPG elements in our first person yeah. shooters. Yeah. yeah, it would have made the the gunplay not feel so stale at the end because it felt really good because you're like, oh, I got the grenade attachment now. I can switch my main gun to have these attachments. Mm-hmm. But by the end, you're like, okay, I'm using the same weapon I have for the past twelve hours. Right. <laughs> I've been doing this shit. I know yeah. it. Which which it made it feel like a rock paper scissors system too because you needed you know your typical machine gun for the regular droids, the grenade launcher for bigger batter guys and then the sniper rifle to hit key targets yeah i like having the, the option super battle droids you need to hit them in the eye to do a lot of damage i like having the option to where it's like instead of a rock paper scissors uh system to where it's like you need this to kill a certain enemy i like to be having the choice to be like upgrading the thing mm-hmm. i like to play as exactly. and then being same able here. to take out the same so if they ever do a remake i hope they do some sort of upgrade system and now yeah. jimmy's that's, game that's out of that game that's that's all i got for that okay um so my game choice for so mountain blade uh war um uh, warband is the original game uh come out by tale wars for this franchise mountain blade bannerlord i am currently doing my live uh, my live stream playthroughs of that game bannerlord to me is in idea form the perfect game and the reason i and I, the reason i push that is because not only is Tail Worlds being so friendly to the modding community so that modders can make the game even more, even better and, and give them small improvements, but they did it right. They did insanely early access and they made it super cheap to, to have early access and they let the community play test the game. They took all the community feedback and the result that released last year was uh, for console PC, the, the open game was near perfect for those who don't know what is your game and what do you play what do you do so uh bannerlord is an open world rpg um is an open world rpg game uh there is a multiplayer uh there's a multiplayer in this game where you can go online and do mock siege siege battles you can do open field skirmishes between uh, real players online uh i i'm focusing specifically on the campaign the story takes place in a fictional world called Cal- uh, Calradia, which is kind of a mock-up of Europe. You know, there's yeah, southern- it's like a medieval setting. It's a very much a medieval setting. Um, as far as I can tell, there's nothing tying it to real-world storyline at or to the real-world history at all. They take uh, bits and pieces from different cultures around the world. And- yep, and integrate that into integrate that into character styles and different right. uh, cultures and stuff like that. But the castles are amazing for siege battles. The actual siege equipment you can use the siege equipment and you feel so rewarded when you use a catapult with 30 rocks in it and just wipe out an entire like a platoon. platoon of archers or stuff <laughs> so the siege battles are insanely uh fun the wor- the ex- exploration mechanic is really good um the story is really simple too it's you are a commoner who finds this artifact uh called the dragon banner and the Empire of Calradia broke up into now all these, I think it's like seven Aww. factions. Did one cheat on the other one? Aww. Yes. Uh, well, the Emperor died. And so all seven factions are now biding for power to try to become the new Empire. And so all these cultures have different ambitions, different styles, and different ways of fighting. And you as a commoner found the Dragon Banner, which will, is the sigil that will basically represent you are the king, the Emperor. And so you go on a quest to find the other artifact pieces. And once you do... 
you're able to decide if you want to become king of Cal Radio or if you want to pass the banner on to a lord that you support. See, I didn't think this game had a story at all. I thought it was all sandbox. You make oh, your own yeah, story. I guess I didn't either. So, no, the game has a legitimate, uh, legitimate story. Um, the the story is very much. It's more like on really long timers than it is like here's your next mission. Mm-hmm. So you can go conquer. You can build your clan up. You can level up your troops. You can go fight. You can go have fun. But within so many years in game, you need to go and have, yeah, you need to have accomplished this, or you need to have talked to these people, or you need to become this powerful of a clan. And so that's, so it's more of like timed quests than it is actually a long narrative story. Mm -hmm. But um, Tale Worlds has actually done a good job of expanding on the dialogue in the game. They've given a lot more of the NPCs dialogue and voice acting for them, which has really made... Because this game was in early access for a while, wasn't it? Years. Years. Yeah, it had been. I think it had been like ten years or more since uh, Warlords um, was out. Warband. 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 Yeah. Warband, Warband was out for a long time. Yeah. So I think it's been almost over a decade since Warband was yeah. out. Yeah. And my understanding was they never really stopped because the the modding community was very supported by Warband too. So it's the thing about Bannerlord that you guys that I really need to pitch hard on this. Is that they are getting a mod that will make Bannerlord in Middle Earth, in yeah, Lord of the Rings. Sweet. Yeah, so you will be able to play as Gondor, as the orcs of, as Mordor. You'll be yeah. able to play as all of the like elves, dwarves, men, orcs. Yeah, that's sweet. All orcai, um, and you can. There won't be magic in it. I think they're they're be they're very strict on that. That they won't do anything that wasn't in Peter Jackson's films. Yeah. Well, yeah, Lord of the Rings is a soft magic system, is it? Yeah. So, but they're is. they're making the Middle Earth map. I mean, they're doing all of this stuff, and I've been paying very close attention. When that drops, it will be the greatest thing that will have ever <laughs> blessed the gaming community. It's if, Jimmy's dream game. It is my dream game. My uh, as far as my stuff goes, the only thing I wish this game had is a co-op mode for the for the sandbox for mm-hmm. the campaign. Because one thing that would be really cool is if... Because I, I, I don't think this is a game that maybe... Maybe you you downloaded it, right, Cody? Uh, I, I don't play, know if you played I, it. I tried a little bit of Warband and a little bit of this. It's not my cup of tea. Sure. But, I'm, Taylor? No, I've never played it. But I did want to... I was going to watch your playthroughs all the way through and see if I would be something I'd like or not. But well, what I haven't I, played it yet. What I would really like to at some point is... Because the sandbox is... It's a sandbox. If this game had any way to... I don't like off, sand. It would be so fun. It's rough. Yeah. This game would be so fun for two people to it just gets get everywhere and play. It gets everywhere. I hate sand. <laughs> <laughs> I got that reference. Yeah, it's about uh, time. Uh, that's the one thing this game is missing. The issue with the game is that everything runs in uh, in-game days and nights, mm-hmm. so there's a time attached to everything. Yeah, I don't like time limits. And the and the uh, the fighting mechanics basically pause the timer in the world, so you go into a fight, and even if your fight takes 15, 20 minutes. The, it, when you get out of it and you're mm. back in the world map, that no time has passed. So if you had two players playing at the same time, it'd be impossible to manage that yeah. clock cro- properly. So there, they had a really, really big logistical issue that they tied themselves into right away. So maybe that'll come out and get fixed with some creative idea. Mm. I I don't know, but my thought was when you're traveling on the road, you always have a companion, mm. and your companion could be. So if you have an army and your your friend you're playing online with has an army, you both have companions. If one of you gets into a fight, the other Once player join. can join in as yeah. the companion and pause the world timer. Yeah. Or if one person's fighting and the other player doesn't want to fight, the world timer continues, and that's a struggle that both that's a struggle that both factions have to yeah. deal with. That's one thought I had, but no one listens to talks, so why would they? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, who wins? Whose is the best? Is, is mine the best? I think mine's the best. Well, if we put another poll up <laughs> and, do, oh. and do like we did last yeah. time. Yeah. We need to talk about that. That was, uh, that was very funny. We should talk about that real quick. So, yeah, we put up a poll. Um, I voted for myself in last week's poll for uh, who had the best movie. 
Um, I'm gonna say that the winner. I think we. I, I think we all agree. The winner on that uh, poll and from the comments was the Patriot. Mm-hmm. The most engagement we had was in the most engagement we had was in the comments. Yeah. Um, and that went towards the Patriot for sure. Um, as it's far as the poll the went, <laughs> we're gonna continue to put up polls. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, the engagement gets a little bit. We get a little bit more engagement on those polls. Um, well, that's two actually for me, ain't it? Uh, what was the yeah. other one? Inglorious Bastards. It was. That, yeah, you oh, won Inglorious God. I'm Bastards. I'm on fire. Too. Just don't add them next time. Maybe I'm well, too mainstream. The poll. May- yeah, if you just lean into mainstream, yeah. I wonder yeah. how you could possibly lose. I picked a great, phenomenal game, and Far Cry 3 is probably the most <laughs> probably. popular. Probably. Maybe yeah. Star Wars Commando, but... No, um, so guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Third Party Podcast. Um, we are going to wrap it up there. We talked about quite a bit today, and we're going to move into the next episode. Um, t- uh, comment what your favorite video game of these three were, um, and whether or not you what your favorite video game was, and let us know in the comments what you think. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video around with your friends, family, and we will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace. Fucker. <laughs> Don't Mama. say goodbye. <laughs>